Now, you'll remember him as the musical director from The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, airing night nightly right here on Local 4. Since then, Kevin Eubank has continued his passion for music, going on national tours and releasing new albums. That's right. He will play at the Blue Llama Jazz Club in Ann Arbor this weekend. Thanks yeah, for hanging out with us. It's fun. This is a fun show. Good. I'm glad really you're having cool. fun. We try to keep it light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're used to that. <laughs> Not as cool. No, really. It's, it's nice and loose here. It's really cool. I like it. Good. I'm you glad know. you're having a good time. So so does it seem like 18 years went by during your time with Jay? Yes. <laughs> I mean, because you get to see history, like, right in front of you. All the politicians come on, all the shows that come and go. and So you kind of see it, but you're in this, uh, this studio, like, every single day for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And you see the world passing. And I meet uh, John McCain and a lot of different politicians and everything. I get to talk with them and hang out with them and um, Barack Obama, a lot of people. So you kind of see it pass by. But you don't experience it in the same way. And then after the 18 years are over and you go out, you go like, whoa, mm -hmm. things are different. Yeah, you, you were there for the, uh, when Hugh Grant came on and they, had, they talk about Divine Brown, right? Yes. That must wow. have been wild. All of that. There have been some classic, classics. That's the stuff, just the stuff you've seen. There's wow. stuff backstage. <laughs> <laughs> I can only I like, imagine. Wow. But how did you even get that gig? They kind of just heard about me uh my buddy Branford Branford Marcellus yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. good friend of mine we went to school together and uh, he said man come on and play in, play in this band with me you know do some work with us and stuff so then uh, Jay and I got really really close and everything and uh we just said hey Branford said hey man you should be the band leader man you should run this stuff because this is like you, you and Jay are kicking it so it just evolved into that nobody we, none of us knew what to do we, we were busy on the road traveling and everything. We didn't know what we were going to say. Well, let's try it for a while. I said, okay, I'll try it for five years. And yeah. then it turned into 18, 18. years. Wow. When was the last time you talked to Jay? So, what? <laughs> that sounded just like Jay. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you talked to him? Uh, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> he, he called, he wants me to do the uh, garage show that he has, Jay's Garage. Ah. But I know nothing about cars other than they have four wheels and you put they go. gas, you know. So um, he said, you got to find a car that you want to drive and, and come on the show. But I, don't, I can barely drive a stick shift. I said, Jay, you might want to get somebody. He said, no, everybody's bugging me. How come you don't have Kevin on your show? Because so Kevin can funny. barely drive, so. Well, I have a car suggestion for you. Okay, all right. Tell him that you want to drive a Carmen Ghia. Carmen Ghia? Yep. Why should I do that? What's, 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 is, what's the bomb with the Carmen Ghia? It, it, it's a really old car. All right. And just the design is really cool. I'll pull up a picture for you. I'll show it All to right. you. All right. Tell me you want to drive a Carmen Ghia. You're going to go with her and her Thunderbird around Detroit? You, know, you got a Thunderbird in Detroit? You're kicking the legs. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish, okay. I wish I had a Too Thunderbird. Serious. I wish I had everything that he claims I have, including my penthouse, penthouse apartment. apartment. Right. What about your uh, current? You don't, wait, you don't have the penthouse apartment? As far as no. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, when you're touring around, are you recording music? Uh, where can people find you on social media, find your music? I'm not a big social media guy. Okay. So uh, this sounds real Hollywood, but my publicist takes care of all of that stuff. And she's pissed at me. She says, you, ha you, you don't want to do everything is social media now. I don't know. I'm hanging with my man. We kind of go Randy. back to Randy. We go back, <laughs> and you know, we're like social media. I'm, you know, we, we go back so far. He used to be an Eagles fan. Eagles fan. <laughs> oh my! Oh my! Here he is. He's too. See, see. Everybody's see, that's your cousin, what's up. Randy. That's it, you know? Everyone is your cousin. But one thing that's really amazing that you're doing, you're a huge advocate of music education. Absolutely. Something that a lot of students don't get these days. No, they don't. And I, and I think it's, it's way more serious than people take it. Uh, m most importantly, I think that music education is just education. To put the label on it, music education or yeah. arts education, makes it seem like it's uh, you know, a, something you can do without. Right. But you really can't. Because everything that happens in the arts and music, where you play with another person, you show up on time, you rehearse, mm -hmm. you get good at your craft, all of that is something that you need in any business you go to. You have to listen to others, you have to take direction and give direction when it's necessary. If you're playing too loud that you can't hear the person next to you, then you have to come back and not at all be about you. It's, it, it does so much, and for the neighborhoods that the, the students are in. When they're walking to school and they have instruments, they see each other the same age doing recitals. All of that stuff builds confidence. Very few of them will probably be professional, mm -hmm. you know, musicians. Right. 
But in the meantime, they're figuring out how to solve problems, not just technically, but emotionally and compassionately too. I would rather have um, a president that was in the arts somehow, um, because it gives you a certain sense of compassion about things, so it's not just the bottom line all the time. So a lot of times when you do something completely out of technology, but you don't have compassion about it, how does that affect the environment? It's right. how, how you apply exist? it. It's how you apply it Life and skills. how you come up with it. If you can make plastic things, but you don't know how to biodegrade them, then where do they wind up in the ocean? And things, so, right. what, but if you're compassionate about it when you create it the first time, maybe a lot of problems never come up, you know, after the fact. Excellent. So it, it's, it's educational. It's not necessarily just about music. You got it. Excellent way to end off your, your interview. You're going to hang out, though. I will definitely hang right. out, even though you don't have the pit. I'm oh, still sorry. going. I'm still going. <laughs> or vegan I'm, chicken sandwiches. <laughs> And finally today, we're going to leave you with some mu more music from Kevin Eubanks, the former music director for The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. He is going to be at the Blue Llama Jazz Club in Ann Arbor tonight, two shows, and two shows tomorrow night. Uh, yeah. What are you going to play for us? We're going to play a standard, a beautiful song called Summertime that a lot of jazz musicians have done. It's a beautiful song. But I, I heard that the two of you sing. Did you uh, I did. I don't know any I, lyrics. Who told you that lie? I, <laughs> I can said, hum. I said, as long as the host going to hang out with <laughs> me and sing it's with me. Totally, it no. was the 3rd of September. No. <laughs> <laughs> what key was that? <laughs> I know, right? All right, you ready? Again, tonight and tomorrow night at the Blue Llama in Ann Arbor. We're going to let you take it away. <laughs>